Hello Grade 11s and welcome back to this topic on quantitative aspects of chemical change. In today's lesson, we will revise percentage composition and empirical formula. Let us join Keke as she works through this lesson. Have you ever wondered whether we can confirm that a chemical formula of a substance is really correct and not just based on one of those bonding theories you learnt about in previous grades? Well, in this lesson, we will see how the relationships and equations that we've learnt about so far help us do exactly that. There are two important ways of showing the ratio of the elements that react to form a substance found in a sample. The first way is to represent the mass contribution each element makes to the total mass of the sample as a percentage. This is called the percentage composition. The second way is to show the ratio of the elements in a compound as a whole number ratio in its simplest form. This ratio is called the empirical formula of the compound. You should be able to calculate the percentage composition of an element in a compound and determine the empirical formula of a compound given the percentage composition. Determining the percentage composition and empirical formula is not just a theoretical question asked in school exams. In industry, chemists and mining engineers calculate these values in their daily work. South Africa is a leader in the field of mining. We have some of the richest mineral deposits in the world and world-class scientists who support the industry. Here at Mintech, for example, Scientists analyze rock samples to determine what percentage of different elements the rock samples contain. They use a scanning electron microscope. This special machine can give a reading of the exact percentage of each element present in a particular sample. They can then design the most economical method for extracting metals like gold, manganese, platinum and iron from their ores. Now, unfortunately, not everyone can afford an electron microscope. So, for the rest of this lesson, we will look at the way in which we can find the percentage composition and the empirical formula of a compound by doing some chemical calculations. Finding the percentage composition and the empirical formula is a useful way of comparing the amount of a particular substance in two different compounds. For example, it can help us to tell which of the oxides of iron, iron 2 oxide or iron 3 oxide contain the larger proportion of iron. This would be very useful information for someone who needed to extract the maximum amount of iron from iron ore. We will start our lesson by joining Aaron as he reacts iron with oxygen to form one of iron's oxides. We will then use the data that he collects as he does the experiment to calculate the empirical formula and the percentage composition of the compound that forms as the product during this experiment. Hello there guys. I've used the electronic scale to get the exact mass of the iron filings in the glass tube and I found the mass to be exactly 0 0.28 grams and I've collected the data in a simple table over here and I've also filled the gas syringe with oxygen gas and at the other end of the glass tube I have an empty gas syringe. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the iron filings in here while pushing the oxygen over it from the one syringe into the other. Wow, look at the glow. Well, clearly a chemical reaction has taken place. Look, there's very little oxygen left in the syringe. So the oxygen must have reacted with the hot iron in here to form a compound. And that probably is one of the oxides of iron. But at this stage, we don't know the chemical formula. So we need to do some measurements followed by some calculations. So what I'm going to do first is to find the mass of the product. Can you notice that the mass of the product is greater than the mass of the iron we started with? Can you explain the increase in the mass? Well, the mass of the iron did not change during the reaction. So this must be true to the fact that oxygen reacted with the iron to form an oxide of iron. Now all we need to do now is to find the mass of the oxygen which reacted with the iron to form the oxide. 
And we can do that by subtracting the mass of the iron from the mass of the product. And that should give us 0 0.08 grams. Now let's go back to studio and see how we can use this data. I hope you enjoyed watching that experiment. The data that we got from that experiment is extremely useful. Let me show you how we can use it to find the percentage composition and the empirical formula of the compound that formed. Let's find the empirical formula first and then have a look at the percentage composition. Remember, the empirical formula tells us the simplest whole number ratio of atoms found in the compound. This can then be used to write the chemical formula of the substance. Now, remember, we mentioned earlier that iron has two common oxides, iron 2 oxide with a chemical formula of FeO and iron 3 oxide with a chemical formula of Fe2O3. I wonder what the formula is of the oxide we formed in the lab. Let's find out. We start by calculating the number of moles of iron and the moles of oxygen used in the experiment. Remember, to find the number of moles when given the mass, we can use the equation N equals the mass of the sample M divided by the molar mass capital M. For elements like iron and oxygen, we can look up these values on the periodic table. Why don't you use this equation to work out the number of moles of iron and oxygen used up in the reaction and then fill in the table. I filled in the number of moles of iron and oxygen on my table. Check that you have the same answers as I have. This tells me that the iron to oxygen ratio is 1 to 1. So the empirical formula for the product is FeO. Our product is iron to oxide. Our next calculation requires us to work out the percentage composition of the iron 2 oxide Aaron made in the lab. Remember, percentage is just a way of showing a ratio by comparing the individual contributions to a total of 100. To calculate a percentage of mass, we take the mass of iron, divide this by the total mass of the product, and then multiply by 100. The answer here is 77,78%. This means that in a 100 gram sample of iron 2 oxide, exactly 77,78 grams would be iron. Can you calculate the percentage of oxygen in this compound? That's right, the percentage of oxygen is 22,22%. Remember right at the beginning of the lesson, I told you that finding the percentage composition and the empirical formula is a useful way of comparing the amount of a particular substance in two different compounds. Well, we can now use the answers of our calculations to compare the two oxides of iron. But before we can compare the two compounds, we first have to find the percentage composition of iron 3 oxide. We can do this by using the chemical formula. The first step is to find the molar mass of the compound. In this case, the molar mass of iron 3 oxide is 160 grams per mole. Next, we have to work out the percentage that each element contributes to the total mass. To find the percentage of iron, we take the relative atomic mass of iron, 56, multiply it by 2 and then divide the molar mass of iron 3 oxide and finally multiply it by 100 to get a percentage of 70. Because there are only two elements that make up the substance, you could just subtract your answer for iron from 100 to get the percentage of oxygen. But not all compounds have only two elemental components. So it's best that you practice by calculating the percentage of oxygen using exactly the same method. Did you also come up with an answer of 30%? You should note that no matter how many elemental components the compound you are analyzing has, all the answers must finally add up to 100. You can use this as a useful check to see that we have not made a mistake. Now we are ready to compare the percentage compositions of the two iron oxides. Clearly the iron 2 oxide has a higher percentage of iron than the iron 3 oxide. If I wanted to extract pure iron from rocks, I definitely want to choose a rock with a higher iron content. There is one final type of calculation I want to show you today. 
Suppose I've been given the percentage composition of a compound either as a result of careful laboratory measurements or as a printout from an electron scanning microscope. Would I be able to calculate the empirical formula of the compound? Have a look at this question. A compound contains 30,4% nitrogen and 69,6% .6 oxygen. What is the empirical formula of this oxide of nitrogen? Let's work through this problem together. Remember that if you say that a compound contains 30,4% of nitrogen, it means that in a 100 gram sample of this compound, there will be 30,4 grams of nitrogen. With this information, we can now work out the number of moles of nitrogen in the compound. Using the formula N equals M divided by capital M, we find that 30,4 grams divided by 14, the relative atomic mass of nitrogen atom, equals 2,17 moles. Now we calculate the number of moles of oxygen. The number of moles of oxygen is equal to 4,35. Now to find the simplest ratio, I have to divide through by the smallest number of moles, in this case, 2,17. So, 2,17 moles divided by 2,17 moles gives us an answer of 1. 4,35 moles divided by 2,17 moles gives us an answer of 2. The simplest ratio of nitrogen to oxygen is 1 is to 2. This means the empirical formula for this compound is NO2. Thank you for that, KK. Let us now investigate a problem involving percentage purity. This seashell contains calcium carbonate, but also other impurities as well. Let us determine the percentage purity of this seashell. We do this by using the following equation. Percentage purity equals mass of pure substance over total mass of substance multiplied by 100. This means that we need to measure the total mass of this shell and then calculate the mass of pure calcium carbonate in this shell. Let us look at a problem. A seashell that contains calcium carbonate has a mass of 8 grams. The shell is reacted with hydrochloric acid and 5,55 grams of calcium chloride is produced. Calculate the percentage purity of the shell. Let us start by filling in what we know and what we want. We know that 5,55 grams of calcium chloride is produced and we want to know what mass of pure calcium carbonate was required to produce this. Then we'll make sure the equation is balanced by placing a 2 on HCl. And then we determine the mole ratio. In this case, it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. Next, we calculate the number of moles of calcium carbonate using the equation N equals small m over big M. Now we use the mole ratio to determine the number of moles of pure calcium carbonate. Using this information, we calculate the mass of pure calcium carbonate using the equation small m equals N multiplied by big M we find it to be 5.01 grams. Finally, we can calculate the percentage purity of the shell by putting the mass of pure calcium carbonate over the total mass of the shell and working this out as a percentage. So a seashell sample such as this one contains roughly 62,63% calcium carbonate. That's all for today, Grade 11s. Make sure to attempt the task video at the end of this series. You can also find out more information on this topic at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Until then, goodbye.